Hello and welcome back, this time to my back garden. I'm sat here because I've amalgamated so much video and taken so many photographs over the last few months that it's getting ridiculous now. So I've come out, I'm gonna bookend this and just move on. This video is gonna be a, a record of the exploits I've been up to with the camera over the last few months again. Not all the pictures in this are gonna be incredible. Some are quite good, some I'm quite proud of, but uh, you know, you've gotta keep taking loads of bad photos I think to, to find the great ones so you know if you're struggling with it I feel your pain if you keep taking them you'll get some great ones have faith no 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 don't worry I'm not subjecting you to that in full moving on so first rewinding to April I took my car to be serviced in Macclesfield and whilst they were doing it I had a bit of a ride round on the Brompton and uh, went to South Park and took a couple of shots and uh, visited a church, St Michael's on the way back and uh, found this rather pretty bench. Moving on to the 3rd of May now, I took a trip out in the rain up Teg's nose, there's a lot of wind noise on this footage so I might mute a lot of it um, but I can thoroughly recommend it for a walk when, when it's not peeing down with rain. So I've come out and um, forced myself to come out because I thought, you know, in clement weather, I might make some different photographs. But no, saw a few little lambs back there, which are very cute by the fence, but a family came past and disturbed them before I got a decent shot, but never mind. My legs are wet, coat is laying through water, and I'm miserable. I'm going home. Nice little shot there of uh, two little spring lambs by the side of the path. I was plagued a bit with lens fogging up when I was walking around. Has anyone experienced that? And how, how do you get rid of it? You know, I've tried having it in a warm car, I've tried keeping it cool before you go out. It doesn't, doesn't seem to change much for me. Started to make my way up to the Teg Snow Summit, took a picture of the reservoir as I was climbing up there. This, a lot of this footage is, there's too much wind on it. The basic gist of it is I was wet and out of breath. I came across the Teg's Nose Quarry, which I didn't even know was there and they've got this big frame saw there and various other equipment they use to um, cut the stone up into pieces at a, a blistering four to five centimetres an hour apparently. How times have changed. Moving on to the 7th of May now, this is something I don't really usually take. It's a bit bland and bleak for me but um, you know, venture out, try new things. Also took this uh, interesting sort of abstract close-up of some woodworm in a, in a log I found whilst having a walk. Tried to make a nice silhouette here of uh, these bluebells uh, in the wood near where I live, messing with the sliders in Lightroom to try and get it to look all arty-farty. Let me know what you think. Next we have a picture of yours truly, taken by my mate Jim um, on my birthday, the second birthday I've had during this uh, pandemic now, which is uh, just delightful. Interesting old machine, don't really know what it is, found in the pub. Maybe it's a mangle, not sure. Now let's move away from the garden and uh, move to John on location. Hello. Today you join me at Little Morton Hall, which is a Tudor building built around 500 years ago and is a National Trust site. The Mortons found their money after the Black Death by buying land really cheaply and managed to purchase this amazing property. Some standard fair shots of uh, this Tudor building coming now. I like them. Um, not, not groundbreaking, but it's, uh, it's nice to see uh, buildings like this survive and uh, record them the best you can. Some lovely grounds at Little Morton Hall I'd thoroughly recommend a visit, including this secret bench I found, which was very serene. I'll take a book next time. So when the Mortons were building this place, they decided to be a little bit funny. If you look at a piece of stained glass up there, you'll see a wolf's head above a barrel and another name for a wolf's head is a moor and a barrel is also called a ton and so you see more ton more ton hilarious Tudor puns the best kind of puns a bit more stained glass now I like the colour in this one it kind of draws your eye to it and uh, holds your interest at least for a few seconds then we had this uh, lovely lady in traditional garb talk us through um, how to make, um, I can't remember what they're called actually, the f little bags full of herbs which um, the Tudors, a fly, um, the Tudors thought helped medicinally. And despite the slightly grisly nature of this next one, 
Um, I don't think you have to worry about it. He's just sleeping, okay? And fake. Heading upstairs inside the hall, I uh, found a Tudor bog, and um, that's um, toilet for my friends across the pond. Bit of a shot looking downstairs, and I found this uh, fireplace with uh, this old vase in it, and uh, the quality of this camera, the Nikon Z72, is just unbelievable. You know, 45 megapixel sensor is as big as we ever need to go. Quick picture of Martha's embroidered bedspread here. This bit of the house is the long gallery, which was used for showing off and entertaining friends, but it was kind of an afterthought on the house, hence why it's so crooked and it's started falling down and it's had to be you know, strengthened over the years. Bit of a strange segue now into this Lego piano I built, which is a set you can anyone can buy. I've not played with Lego since I was a kid, and it was great just to sit back, relax, build this, and switch off from the adult world with adult responsibilities. I can thoroughly recommend it. It works and everything. Genius. At the end of May, I took a trip away with the camera uh, to Herefordshire and then Oxfordshire. One of the first places I went to was the Hereford Museum where I came across this thing called a bee meter which was used in the early days of photography to get your exposure right. You'd align the plate speed around the edge of the meter with the f-stop you wanted to use and that would determine the number of seconds you'd expose for by measuring the time it took for the little piece of light sensitive paper to turn to the light right shade. I never knew these things existed, so it was uh, cool to learn that he came from Herefordshire originally. I also quite like this painted horse from a, a merry-go-round I found inside the museum. On to Hereford Cathedral now. This huge, wonderful building has been sat in Hereford for 1,300 years or so. Standard fair photographs, but a great place to visit nonetheless. <laughs> this. This dog made me laugh while sitting and having me lunch. I had to film it. Properly stubborn, didn't want to go anywhere. Hereford Cathedral is also home to a map of Monday, which is the biggest medieval map remaining in the world, which dates from about 1300. There's also this chained library there, which kind of looks like the uh, Hogwarts restricted section. A complete change of scene now. Whilst I was down in Herefordshire, I spent some time at Oldfield Forge, which is a place that offers courses to people who want to go and forge for the day. So I um, got me hammer and anvil and you know leather apron and lots of sweat and blood in some cases. And uh, I made this uh, candlestick holder. Yeah, actually, I'll go and get it. There you go. Um, it's got a failed basket twist in it. Um, it's a bit wonky, but there we go. Lots of fun, recommend. Bung that there. Moving on again now to Eastner Castle, where they had a bit of a steam rally on, so lots of old traction engines, motorbikes, lorries. They had some great music there too, by Source City Jazz. Uh, I took, uh, took a few photographs for them. If you ever, ever get a chance to see them, I'd recommend it, yeah, they were, they were fab. One of the highlights of the day whilst I was at the castle was um, seeing the falconry display and I managed to get up close and personal with uh, the 70 to 200 so I got some cool shots of these uh, falcons. I'm going to get some of these printed I think. I also got a chance to go inside the castle and the first thing I noticed due to my childishness was the text on this old fire extinguisher. The place had some wonderful traditional decor, including this old Steinway piano. Must be worth a fortune. So today I've come to this Weir Garden, which is in Herefordshire, which is alongside the River Wye. And it's home to lots of plant life and wildlife and birds, and it's brilliant. So relaxing. I really enjoyed visiting Weir Garden. It was a nice interlude on the journey I had between Herefordshire and Oxfordshire. I recommend anyone going, it's standard National Trust site, very pretty. <coughs> now we come to Oxford. First thing I did was uh, go and punt on the Thames, as you do. Sun, water, beer, what's not to love? 
For those who don't know, there are thousands of bicycles in Oxford. I found this one on the railings of the Radcliffe camera, which I thought looked rather pretty. Here's the Radcliffe camera itself. There are thousands of photographs of this, so moving on. Here's yours truly, outside the University Church of St. Mary. Don't I look like a proper tourist? And I've got a few extra ones here of Oxford places and Oxford people doing Oxford things. Now we move on to the 2nd of June where I took a trip to the History of Science Museum. And what you're looking at here is a single nanoparticle of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, one million times actual size, sculpted in glass. There were all sorts of historical artefacts in this place, from clocks to optical equipment to models of the universe, but I found this old sextant of Isambard Kingdom Brunel's quite fascinating. Amongst all the historical artefacts was Einstein's blackboard. So in 1931, Einstein visited Oxford and used this blackboard to explain the age and size of the universe in one of his lectures that he gave. A very pretty place to visit if you're in Oxford is Oxford Botanical Gardens, where there are hundreds of species of uh, plants and flowers from around the world. This one is a, a Nymphaea ruby, and I also like this other one, which I don't know the name of, but it's uh, very pretty. Whilst I was walking around the gardens, I managed to capture this quintessentially British photograph of well, what I assume is one of the university students punting someone round on the Thames. And that was all of the Oxford trip. We moved back home now and uh, a strawberry update, they survived and they are gorgeous. I'd thoroughly recommend uh, growing your own if, uh, if you're able to. Having homegrown fruit is just wonderful just to go and pick at during the day. They definitely taste better than the supermarket. And now it's time we had a chat about the birds and the bees. So the birds have arrived in the garden and so have the bees. Uh, that, that's on my brolly, that bee, uh, sorry, umbrella for friends across the pond. Back to John in person again. Today I'm in the middle of nowhere on a random railway bridge in the middle of the countryside. I'm here just to, as a bit of nostalgia really because it's somewhere I used to come with my dad before he passed away when I was younger and we used to come down here at night riding the bikes and have the bats flying past our heads as we uh, went down the lanes. Today though I've brought the camera and caught some lovely butterflies in that field of corn over there so let's see how they turn out. I've no idea as of yet. I need to find a drink of water because I'm bloody boiling. Englishman, you see. Too hot in the summer, too cold in the winter, we're never happy. Onward! Before I got to the butterflies though, I went through Vale Royal Locks where I took a few photographs. This is average and this next one is a classic example of playing with the Lightroom sliders too much. It's horrible. I looked back at it later and I'd just gone way over the top. So yeah, let that be a warning to you. I took another one um, without the uh, long exposure, but again, very average in my opinion, but we live and learn. So on to the butterflies. These are both uh, small tortoiseshell, uh, very pretty, a sign of summer. Moving on again to the 3rd of July, where Jess and I took a trip out to Buxton to do some falconry and flying of some uh, birds of prey. We got a chance to hold all sorts of birds, including this northern white-faced owl, which weighed basically nothing. This falcon was very cool, but one of the most handsome birds, in my opinion, is the, is the kestrel, who we got to fly. Here I've used the Nikon Z72's video at 120fps, 1080p, and slowed it down. Looks really cool, I think. Next we had this Harris Hawk, which uh, was a little bit intimidating to hold, a little bit bigger. Last and not least was the Golden Eagle, which was terrifying. It was really heavy, about six or seven kilos, and I'm sure it could have killed me. I learned afterwards that the, the glove they give you to hold the thing is actually just to stop superficial scratches, and it could easily just mangle your fingers through the glove. So. But anyway, I managed to get really close with the 70-200, much closer than I get in the wild, so I managed to get this uh, fantastic shot of the Golden Eagle. Okay, so that's everything I had this time to show you. 
there are loads and loads more photographs that I took along the way and you can go and have a look at the portfolio if you're, if you're interested. So thank you for watching. Um, feedback as usual please, photo critique, great. Um, be civil um, and we can have a conversation underneath, just pop a comment. I'll try once again, I know I said this last time, but I'll try and get something out sooner uh, of a similar style. I've got things planned in. I know it was a long video to get through, so well done. You listened to me for a long time. See you soon.